So I upgraded it to a buy around about the sort of ten dollar fifty mark, and it's slid yesterday. It was down to sort of nine dollars eighty two. So look, I I think the, the the stock has certainly got value in terms of its revenue quality. So let's not forget something like eighty to ninety percent of its revenues are take or pay in nature. A uh, very high proportion of its revenues come from investment grade credits. Um, it's got a average revenue term of something like 12 years. The asset base, as we know it, you know, they've got the East Coast grid, they've got a West Coast grid. Um, you know, it's it's very powerful sort of monopoly type asset. Uh, very strong cash generation, very high levels of uh, EBITDA sort of cash conversion. Balance sheet's very solid. And the yield now, I mean, the yield is now sitting over 5%, which it hasn't been for quite some time. I should point out that's a yield on a um, on a distribution guidance, which is where the distribution for this year will be substantially in line with the 50 cents from last year. Very interesting that the first half distribution was actually up 4%. I know we're getting into minutia here, but the first half was actually up 4%. So they'd actually have to see the second half go backwards to be in line. APA have never actually had a half-on-half -half distribution go backwards. So I think there could actually be growth that'll come through this year. So I think they're being a bit light on that distribution guidance. What's caused the slip? Well, um, there's no new news that I can sort of think of, so I'm only really speculating. So here's the speculation. So first up, the, the deal that they announced late last year, which actually caused my upgrade to come through, um, it was a little bit different to what APA normally does. APA doesn't usually commit major capital unless it has um, its return of and return of that capital underwritten by long-term customer contracts with creditworthy counterparties. That deal they did last year, um, they actually started the construction without those customers tied up. So it's like they're sort of willing to take on a little bit of additional risk to get some of these deals done. Um, now, logic there could very well be that they wanted to get the pipeline built before uh, 2000, mid-2022. And the reason for that is the federal government's allowing immediate expensing of capital projects from budget night through to 2022. Um, for projects that are actually brought online by that day. So if they can do that, there's obviously a, a fairly big um, a tax kicker coming through for them. So I think that's the reason they sort of pulled the, pulled the trigger on it. Um, other ideas, look, APA is a top 50 stock. It had run pretty well during that whole COVID period. I'm just wondering whether it's been a, a funding source um, as investors may be switching from defensive into cyclicals ahead of the world sort of maybe emerging from the whole, uh, the whole COVID-19 period. Uh, growth versus value. So APA has always been seen as a, a growth stock, but if I look at my forecast going forwards, it's relatively low growth. It's like two to three percent compound over the next five years. So maybe it's been put into the value camp for a little while. Maybe there's, uh, you know, they've always talked about a USA acquisition. They've been over there hunting for a while, and they've always said they need to raise capital if they're going to do that. Potentially, someone's got sniff that um, that the acquisition is is around the corner. I got told that you might remember just before Chong Kong, Chong Kong announced their takeover bid. I got told that they were literally days within uh, signing on a dotted line for an acquisition back then. So that's how close they've been. So they certainly are on the hunt. And the other one sitting out there, the one that I kind of go, oh, I hope that's not the case, is ESG. Um, now, gas used to be thought of as, as good for the environment because its emissions intensity is a lot lower than what coal is. It used to be thought of as being the transitional energy source as we transition from coal into renewables. But renewables have, have come on that quick. Um, I'm just hoping that the, the thinking out there hasn't changed, that gas is bad and therefore uh, APA is, you know, an ESG sort of cross against it on that front. So um, I don't think that's the case just yet. I think there's uh, certainly the forecast I see, uh, the gas will continue to have a, um, a place within the energy mix within Australia. and. And even uh, longer term, actually start to see some growth again as coal gets replaced and with renewables and renew renewables needs the backup from uh, from gas-fired power gen. Um, the other thing I should point out too is it's got a relatively new management team. So you might remember Mick McCormack and his offsider Peter Fredrickson. Well, they are now both out of the business. Um, the CEO has been there for a bit over a year. New CFO is coming in, so the, the trans-urban CFO has actually moved across to APA. He, um, he started in December last year. I was having a chat to him late last year about moving across. He, he was pretty excited about the new management team and the ability to 
um, maybe take this company to the next level. So we're sort of saying, you know, watch out for, for developments with the APA within 2021. So I, I think stock at the moment is a, is a real buying opportunity given that yield and potential capital growth.